Welcome back folks to Investor Diaries. We are here to discuss about Zomato in this episode. This has been a highly requested video, so we hope you like it. Now Zomato is an Indian online food delivery company which was opened to the public on July 14th, 2021. And its market debut was watched for cues by a number of other online ventures in India who also have ambitions to go public. The primary attraction of this company to investors comes not only from its current standing, which is to say it's got say modest revenues and huge losses, but rather it's positioning in the Indian ecosystem to take, to take advantage of the potential growth in the Indian food delivery market. In a short span of one month, the company's stock price has been fairly volatile. A lot of people have said that the valuation is not in line with the current offerings and some have argued rather that the story is really good, that the company will keep attracting new customers. So let's look at Zomato's background. So Zomato was founded in 2008 by Deepinder Goyal and Pankaj Chadha as Foodie Bay. It was primarily created in response to the difficulties that they noticed when their office mates were trying to download menus of restaurants. Their initial response was a simple one, where they uploaded soft copies of the menus of local restaurants in Delhi, the capital of India, onto the website, initially for the people of their office, and then slowly expanded to everyone in the city. Slowly, as their popularity grew, they expanded their service to other Indian cities, and in 2010, they renamed the company Zomato with the tagline, never have a bad meal. The business model of the company is built upon intermediation where customers can connect to restaurants on the platform, order food for pickup or delivery and advertising. Okay, so let's try to break down the revenue streams of Zomato here. So Nitish, the way I'm looking at it, there are like four sources of revenue yeah. here, transaction fees, advertising fees, there's the subscription fees, which is uh, the subscription to Zomato Gold or Pro or the restaurant raw material. So when we look at transaction fees, the bulk of Zomato's revenues, they come from the transactions on its platform, from food ordering and delivery, as the company keeps a percentage of the total order with itself. Now, Zomato's slice of revenue can vary across orders from say 20 to 25% of the gross order value. And it's worth noting that Swiggy, which is one of Zomato's top competitors in India, it takes a similar percentage of the order revenues. Okay, so let's look at the other ones. And the second on the list is advertising. Now, restaurants that list on Zomato have to pay a fixed fee to get listed but they can also spend more money on advertising based on say customer visits and uh, resetting uh, revenues to get additional visibility. Third is the subscription model. Now, Zomato also offers a subscription service and subscribers to Zomato Gold, which is now Zomato Pro, will help you get discounts on food and faster deliveries. This service came about in 2017 and it had 1.5 million plus members in 2021. And this gave subscription revenues of 600 million rupees, a little less than $10 million and less than 5% of the overall revenues in 2021. And finally, we have the restaurant raw material, which is kind of ignored, but let's talk about it nevertheless. In 2018, Zomato introduced HyperPure. Now HyperPure is a service that is directed at restaurants. It offers groceries and meats that are source checked for quality. While direct measures of revenue from HyperPure, it's difficult to come by. The revenue that the company shows under traded goods, which includes HyperPure services, suggests that it accounts for about 10% of the total revenues. I, I like that. I like that Zomato is diversifying to identify multiple revenue streams and re revenue opportunities. And they have a premium uh, subscription model as well, which is also something I like in terms of in terms of the business model. So now let's look at what are the things that is really going for Zomato, and um, we can just touch upon them briefly. 
the Indian market is littered with bodies of startups who try to do what Zomato have done and are doing and have failed. Second one, Zomato has a strong delivery network in the country. Third, so there is a lot of growth opportunity in tier two and tier three cities and towns in India. And this has been attributed as one of the um, growing revenue pipeline that Zomato has. And fourth, losses are seen to be coming down in the next few years as customers start paying for their own delivery charges, meaning Zomato's expenses should go down and the profitability should be looking up. As I mentioned earlier, at this point, Zomato actually enjoys a fairly substantial share of the Indian market. However, there are several other entities that are waiting to jump in. Scale is really important. And to be quite honest, it is a race against who corners, how much and how fast. There is Swiggy, but there is Amazon Foods as well, which we've spoken about takes only 10% of the gross order value. And this is where we have to understand that Amazon has deep pockets and it can really give Zomato a run for its money. All right, so let's also speak about one of the other interesting parameters. It is a vicious cycle of providing discounts to push people to sign up for Zomato, to push people to order through Zomato or order on the app, something that restaurants have been fighting. What happens is that when discounts are provided, there are people who actually end up ordering but the bigger question is what happens if the discounts are taken away so a big focus today at least before the ipo was on profitability with some analysts wondering if zomato would ever be profitable the profitability of intermediary business example ride sharing apartment renting food delivery etc essentially platforms that connect users to the suppliers that is still being worked out in different markets. But the contours of how this would play out is visible for everybody. The biggest expenses at these companies are often the customer acquisition and marketing. And as growth scales down, these expenses should ideally decrease as a percentage of revenues and delivering a profitability bonus. The biggest challenge that the businesses face is the absence of stickiness or loyalty uh, where users pick the cheapest uh, food delivery service and then go with that. There are often use cases where a customer would get on Zomato, look at the restaurant, look at the prices, overall prices, then they would go on to the competitor, look at the prices for the same order and then go for whichever is cheapest, thereby eliminating loyalty from the equation completely. Okay, so let's look at it objectively and speak about platform businesses for a second. From our perspective, these are disruptors and they've changed not only the market but rather the entire industry in which they operate. However, Damodran, who's regarded as the Dean of Valuation, once said that disruption is easy, making money from disruption is hard. The story of Zomato is no different. It is a disruptor and it is losing money. Well, at this point of time, Zomato's stock price is overpriced. That is a given. However, given the growth story that it has projected in its IPO, we have to really take a judgment call as to whether we believe in its growth story. Right now, it is losing money. So whether it's going to make money in the future is going to spur our decision towards investing in this stock. So what is the Investor Diaries recommendation out here? More than 100 rupees? No, absolutely. There's no reason to buy this stock. You've got a lot of other options in the market that you should try out. From our perspective, we are pretty upbeat about the story of Zomato and we believe that Zomato does have the potential to capture a greater share of the Indian market and at some point of time turn profitable. So we would say that if the price dips below 80 rupees, you have our blessings to go ahead and dip your feet into Zomato stock. But before that, I would say stay away from it. Yeah, I kind of agree with the growth story. Uh, and I do believe that the stock is overvalued as, at this point. If the stock dips below 80 rupees, then the investors, then there is some more appetite to buy the stock. And there, But again, given that you believe in Zomato's growth story and you believe that the company is going to turn profit in the near future, in, in that case, you should definitely go ahead and buy the stock. Okay, 
uh, we hope you like the content feel free to leave your feedback in the comment section below and as always feel free to subscribe to our channel it really helps us thank you so much thanks everyone